everybody, this is Travis Hansen. So, I'm in front of this wall here, decided to get outside because I've been cooped up in the gym all day and we're out here just trying to kind of uh, keep the sound good and stuff. There's a little bit of wind and stuff, so hopefully you guys are able to hear me pretty well. But I just want to take a moment to discuss a particular speed training drill that's existed for a long period of time. It's uh, received some recent ridicule and criticism that I believe is very unfair and again is an overreaction. So if you looked at if you looked at the industry, there's a trend. For whatever reason, we randomly select drills that actually help athletes or individuals, and we just throw them under the bus. I don't know if it's out of boredom or people are just looking for something to pick on, but this particular drill has existed for a long period of time, and it doesn't offer a lot of benefit to, to sprinting in particular, but it does have some level of success, and this relates back to research. So it's the heel to butt run. So I'm sure that many are familiar, so I'll demonstrate really quick. So it's just the heel to butt right here. And then what we do is we utilize that, in theory, as a drill to activate the hamstring and stretch out the glutes dynamically. So it's a good precursor before you get into your sprinting and everything, just to make sure that all these different muscles are activating. And then we incorporate you know, specific sprinting drills to take that activation and then sequence it into a specific motor function, um, target motor function, such as sprinting, to improve it. So there, it's part of a process. And if you look at the research, submaximal activation drills, which the heel to butt run is, does improve athletic measures such as sprinting and jumping. So Dr. Jeff Young, he had some, he cited some research recently. Um, and then in my warm-up manual, I'm going to link that down below for you. Uh, that had some research in that too. Um, so activation drills are they're very effective. We've been doing them for a long time. For whatever reason, the hamstrings got picked on, or the heel to butt run got picked on. And then I want to elaborate a little bit more. Uh, if you actually look at athletes sprint, there is a phase at about mid stance. So as you toe, as they, they toe off and push off the ground, and they go into they go into flight and then land again, that leg comes through. About mid stance, as that leg's passing through and the legs are next to each other, you're going to see the heel in close proximity to the butt. Granted, it's not going to be a full on heel to butt run, but it's it more closely resembles that than not. And there's a particular there's a couple at least a couple reasons for this. So if we, there's a movement principle called active insufficiency. So if you look at a double joint muscle group, um, such as your, your rectus femoris, um, and then your hamstring muscles, um, I might be missing a couple other ones. If they shorten at both ends, they lose strength capacity. So it doesn't make sense when we run. So if you want to eliminate the heel to butt run, what you're basically asking the athlete to do after they, they push off is you're asking them just to swing their leg forward. So it's not loading, like in the heel to butt pattern. You're not storing any energy and increasing force through that hip. That leg's just staying low. And as you know, it's a biarticular muscle. But due to the principle of active insufficiency, it's not going to be able to generate as much force. Also factor that in with the long lever. So the reason that the heel kicks back during, we call this recovery, so as soon as that foot releases the ground, the reason it kicks back is to shorten that lever. So a shorter lever is a hell of a lot easier to move than a longer lever. So this is a lot harder than trying to get this through. And then also you're loading the quadriceps for when you touch down, so they're going to be able to push off harder. And then you're stretching, because remember that active insufficiency, you're stretching, you're putting this on stretch, that knee, to be able to accelerate the hip. So it's, it also promotes a, a better hip response. And the latest research actually shows the quicker we're able to swing that leg, so shorter lever, better loading through the quad, better position for the hip to contract, it's going to mount to a, a faster leg swing and repositioning, which is going to be able to support um, a faster overall sprint time. Um, so we got the active insufficiency, removal of the long lever, Let's see if there's anything else that I'm missing. I feel like I'm missing something else for you guys. Uh, the, the, uh, I think that might be it. So I think that's enough to be able to, to support the heel to butt run. I think that's something that you should do. And all of your dynamic warm-ups, and as you've seen through science, it's going to make you a faster athlete. So that's it.